Hey, I'm going to talk to y'all like we're at Squad and it's Wednesday night, okay, if that's cool with you. Um, we actually got to host our parents this past squad. Now, don't show up this week because we will kick you out. Like, you, you, you can't come back. You need that background check. Be a volunteer. Be a volunteer. Um, but uh, we, we had a special conversation where we essentially said to our parents, hey, talk to your students. And we said to our students, hey, talk to your parents. And so tonight, or tonight, see, I thought we were squad. Today, I want to talk about one of those topics that we should be discussing in our homes with our children and with our parents. And we're in part five of this series, and we're talking about dating, okay? So if you're writing notes down, and people who love Jesus, they take notes. The title is My Story. My story, and this isn't my story, my story, but your story, okay? But it, your, it's your notes, so my story. So write that down. Uh, and it, here's how I begin our series that we do every February. Uh, we go through uh, four weeks, and we talk about love, sex, and dating. And I begin with this paraphrase, but I just go ahead and give it to Andy Stanley. I, I borrowed it from him and kind of rearrange it. But here's a quote from Andy that I, I like to use to just gather our minds around this thought. And it's that your past will sneak into your present and affect your future. Your past will sneak into your present and affect your future. And for our students, I say, if you don't believe me, try this. Don't do your homework tonight. Don't do it. And that will be your past because you'll go to school tomorrow when you're supposed to turn it in and you won't have it. And it will affect your present because you will get a zero and you ain't going nowhere that weekend in your future. (laughs) So you can see how it, it plays out, right? So it is, it's so true. So even in your lives as adults, you know this by now that, you know, what I say and do today is going to be my past. It affects my future. It's weird how it shows up. But I want to gather around that thought with this question, and it's the main question we're going to answer. What story do you want to tell? That's what we want to answer today. So at the end of it, hopefully you'll have a really good story. But what story do you want to tell? And the really cool thing is that that question is transformational. It will make you think from the short term to the long term. And Paul actually wrote about it. So PT's been taking us a little bit through 1 Corinthians 13. So I want to go there real quick. So if you'll turn in your Bibles, 1 Corinthians chapter 13. But skip down to verse 11. And Paul actually looks at uh, what we're talking about today in a really unique way. So he's actually talking about how the church community should be together, one body, right? We should love each other. We should be patient with each other. All these kind of characteristics. But then check this out in verse 11, he kind of cracks down on all adults. So if you're a child in the room, shout out to you. You get to laugh at your parents real quick because look at verse 11. He says this, when I was a child, I talked like a child. You know, when I was cute, when they broke up words, they didn't pronounce them quite the right way. And you're like, that's kind of cute. But then if they get older and they still talk that way, it's like, that's not cute anymore, man. You need, you need to grow up a little bit, right? But he said, I, then I talk like a child. And he kept going, he said, I reasoned like a child. I would think like a child. When I became a man, right? Shout out to all the teenagers who think you a man right now. When I'm a man, I had peach fuzz on my face, right? I'm a man. I put the ways of childhood behind me because I'm a, a man, right? And teenagers, do not look at your parents ever and say, I'm a man. Don't do that. But here's what Paul's saying. I used to think like a child. I used to reason like a child. Do you know how a child reasons? I've seen it in our our little three-year-old. He reasons in the short term. Um, He reasons unreasonably. (laughs) Because I'll say, Lennox, why did you do that? And he'll respond, because I did it. (laughs) And part of me is like, that almost makes sense. But now I've got to try to navigate my question to better have him better answer what I need out of him, right? But he wants to think this. Here's another thought from Lennox, the Chronicles of Lennox, chapter 1, verse 3. I would rather play now than eat now. But he doesn't realize that the window of eating is vastly closing. When we put up the food, the food is put up. And that's it. So you need to eat now. But when we're children, we reason in the here and the now, and I want it now, so I'm going to decide right now what's going to fill my desire. The issue with that thinking is that we'll read that verse and say, yeah, I used to think that way, but as adults and teenagers, we still think and behave that way. I want it now, so I'm going to do whatever I have to now to get what I want now because I want it now. Now, do you sound very much like a man all of a sudden? 
No, we, we, we were kind of stuck here. So when you gather around that kind of thinking, adults think that way, and here's like a relational, practical way that we do that. Uh, here's some advice. Don't pretend to be married. Don't, don't play marriage. We tell our teenagers this. This isn't brand new for them. So if you have any questions after this message, just ask your student if they come to squad. So, so get, let me see your notes, right? They already have these. Don't play marriage. Don't pretend to be married. Uh, here's another one. Don't think that physical intimacy, don't think that sex now means progression in love later. That's not what that means. Sex now means baby later. And now guess who else gets to reason, talk like a child? You, right? Because you're still in that same temporary short-term mindset. Don't play with that right now. So with that in mind, that's short-term childish thinking. What if we looked at dating as an adult? Now, here's what you'll know if you're a biblical theologian. (laughs) There's no dating scripture in the Bible. It doesn't cover that. Oh, so I don't have to do it? Wait through the whole message before you start making any assumptions. <laughs> it's, it can help you when you use this. But back then, it wasn't a thing. You didn't court anyone. You might have gotten taken to court. But it was not a dating thing. That wasn't a thing. You just got matched up with somebody. So shout out to, you know, 2021. No gas, but at least we get to date. You can be stuck at the house, but at least we get to date, right? So with that in mind... I want to now look at a verse that gets very much attention, except I want to go one above it, all right? But let me set it up for you. Uh, Turn to Ephesians chapter 5. Paul's still writing, but in Ephesians chapter 5, verse 22, that's the verse that gets a lot of attention. And all the wives in the room kind of, they don't even have to look. The bad news is that the husbands don't have to look either. That's the verse, ladies. That's, That's the one that he often used. The wife is supposed to submit to the husband, and they want, they want to use that. Uh, and then they'll sit in this sermon and wonder why they're single. <laughs> Just all the, all the fellas like, oh, I know that one. So, yeah. That song. But here's what you need to know about that verse. Let me pick on this verse just for a second, then we'll get to the one that I want to get to. Um, but in that verse, first off, fellas, it's addressed to the wives, you don't need it, right? That, skip over that. Don't read that part. That's not addressed to you. That's addressed to the wives. Paul takes two verses to tell the ladies, hey, keep this in mind in the name of Jesus. But the rest of chapter 5 is all us. He's all right, now, fellas, here's what you need to know. Let me write it. Let me explain it. So let's just get our part, and we're going to be okay. But check this out. The other thing about verse 22 is that all Paul does in verse 22 is repeat what he said in verse 21. And he says, ladies, wives, submit to your own husband. Not the guy down the street, not your co-worker, not that. Your own husband. But in verse 21, now let's look at it. It'll be on the screen for you. As soon as I can turn there, I might need to scream myself. There we go. Uh, verse 21, Paul said, submit to one another out of reverence for Christ. So in verse 22, he just repeated himself to the ladies. ladies, all right, yes, yeah, so do that. Now, fellas. And he slows down, and he sits down, and he gets out some teachable props and everything because he knew how we would be because we the man, <laughs> but we reason like children, right? So with that in mind, I want to look at this verse, verse 21. Submit to one another out of reverence for Christ. So submit to one another to honor God. Here's what that means. Point one, become someone worth submitting to. If you need to know how to be someone worth submitting to, go back to PT's messages in our series that we've already had right here and go back through 1 Corinthians chapter 13. Love is patient. Love is kind. Right? All those things. That's worth submitting to when you're that kind of person. So we should become someone worth submitting to. All right? Point number two, find someone worth submitting to. That's all we could pray right now, and that's it. Just go practice this. Like, go get some lunch, get some brunch, get some gas, right, and, and enjoy this, right? So those are the two points. Now let me slow it down, and let's really talk about this whole dating thing. So first off, a date is an event. This is really for the fellas, right? So a date is an event. Dating is a process, Dating is an actual process. So I want you to write this term down. This is where we're going to hang out for the rest of the message. 
you should practice this in your dating process. Intentional dating. Intentional dating. The short-term definition for that is to date with a purpose. Uh, To expound it a little bit more, it would be to date with the end in mind. That I have a target that I'm aiming toward, and I can tell when I hit the target or when I'm off target. Okay? And teenagers, if you can't tell if you hit the target or you miss the target, your parents can tell you. Okay? (laughs) Right? Yeah, yeah. So around the kitchen table, they'll tell you, like, nah, honey, that, that ain't the one. He ain't the one. Yeah. So you can tell when I'm intentional dating. But here's a longer definition uh, if you want. It won't be on the screen, so just, just absorb this. Intentional dating is spending time with another person in a God-honoring way, in a God-honoring way, in a God-honoring... That's for the students, right, real quick. <laughs> honoring way to find out if that person is right for you to marry. And when you think that way, and when you date that way, you can tell if you're hitting the mark. Because I'm doing an assessment after every event in my dating process, okay? So, uh, you know, after the date, you might call up your girlfriends. Oh, my goodness, honey, uh, it was awesome. Yeah, what'd y'all do? Cold Stone, really? What did he get? He got the Rocky Road. Oh, honey, you already know what that means. I've, I've done some Google on that. He ain't the one for you. Right? You get your girls praying, the fellas get home. Oh, man, it was awesome. What'd y'all do? Ah, nothing. Hey, let's play this video game. It's different. It's different. There's a process to it, but there's an evaluation, and I can tell if I'm hitting the mark or if I'm missing the mark. But, Josh, my my daughter's only 13. You should be talking about this. It's just a process. If if you And I tell them, do what your parents say. If your parents say you can date, then go ahead and date. If they say don't date, don't hide it from them. Because now you're walking around with a lie, and you can't take the most important information to you to the people who love you the most because you're already keeping it from them. That's not God-honoring. Go back to our definition. You're not honoring God with that. You're disrespecting your parents with that. And then you would say, well, God blessed me with this person on Instagram. No, he didn't. You're trying to bless yourself. That ain't going to work. He ain't the one for you, all right? So, So with intentional dating... It's all about this. It's thinking about all of those short-term fixes that I'm not trying to get right now. I'm thinking long-term because I know that my past will sneak into my present and affect my future. And it's all about the story I want to tell, not the story I want to make up, not the story I want to cover up. It's a story I want to tell. I want you to tell a good story. I want you to tell a good story. So here's what every good story has. A good story has good characters right? Uh, good, ca- great characters. I t- during 2020, if you wanted to hook me onto a TV show, I just needed a positive character. I needed someone to root for, that they would bring all this bad stuff to them, and they would just like blast through it with positivity. I won't tell you one of the shows because the language I'm not going to sign off on at Cross Point in Jesus' name, but another show was The Rookie, and that officer was just so positive, I was like, man, it doesn't matter what was happening, what was going, bullets flying, pew, 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 pew. He was just so positive, right? That's my kind of guy. So a good story has good characters, and here's some good news. In your story, you at least get to be one of them. Josh, what do you mean? Because some of y'all try to pretend to be someone else. God can't bless who you try to pretend to be. You're trying to walk out like you got it all together. Oh, yeah, it's Gucci, it's Coach, it's everything. It's all good, it's all good. Where are we going? Uh, We just going to the backyard. I set up a picnic. We doing what? He's trying to bless you and be the one in your story. You're like, nah, nah, nah. I'm trying to read this character on Instagram. How am I supposed to add a filter to this? There's no ring light out here, right? So you can't pretend to be someone and expect God to bless that person. So it's all about good character. So here's the question you need to ask yourself when you're trying to tell a really good story. Question number one is this. Ask, is who I'm dating bringing glory to God? Is the person I'm dating bringing glory to God? Are they pretending? I need to find it in my dating process. Like, I'll take an event. Treat those events, those dates, like interviews. Some of y'all are letting people come to the fourth and fifth interview when they should have never gotten the job to begin with. The good job was the one, right, the good jobs, you have to go through a series of onboarding, and they're vetting you and finding more out about you. 
along the way. When it's just, no offense that we need these people, but usually it's like the high school people that are doing, if I'm flipping fries, I can just walk in, sit down, and let you know I'll be here on time. That's kind of it. When it's my story, and I'm seeing if you're going to be with me along in my story, and I'm deciding how many chapters and pages and ink and tears to waste on you, I should have a vetting process along the way. So who is it that you're trying to write into your story? Now, the good news is you can write some people out, right? You can, you can unfollow. You can block. You can do all the things. You can say, hey, um, it's been fun, but you know that my address is in your, your maps on your phone. Yeah, lose it, right? And that's, and that's okay, right? I can still love you from afar. We don't have to date. But there is a process to where you should vet the people that you're going to spend the most time with. And here's some assessment questions you should ask. Ladies, you don't have to write this down because you know them. Fellas, pen and paper, here we go. <laughs> How does she live her life? How does she talk to people and talk about people? How... Does she treat other people? How does she listen to her parents and the people who care about her most? How are they doing all of these things? Now, don't come up and say, well, Josh, um, I heard that, you know, a wise person once tell me um, that I should be dating a savage. Classy, bougie, ratchet. What? Like, what are we talking about? That is not the kind of person, and, and God's blessed me with her. no. They shouldn't have gotten the interview. How are you going to go to hip-hop music to make your life assessment on what you should be doing on a daily basis with your Friday nights and all that? I don't, that is not what you need to be going. 1 Corinthians 13, not, you know, iTunes Top 40. That ain't, the, that ain't the vibe. That ain't the vibe. That's not where you need to be going. So does she respect her parents? Or, ladies, here's one, does he respect his parents? Does he respect his parents? Here's one I'm going to go ahead and give you. I was going to go for rules for dating. Let me go ahead and give you this one, ladies. I'll write this one down. If he has one chore to do at the house, and it's never done, that's a red flag. All he has to do is cut the grass once every other week, and all you see is dandelions because, oh, I thought you liked the color yellow. That ain't the vibe. That just lets you know what it's going to be like if he gets past all of your interviews into the process. And you just trying to, you ain't got to have nothing that nice, but you can take care of what you got. So how is it that he's getting all these other interviews and all these extra events? If this were The Bachelor, he does not need the rose, right? That ain't it. That ain't the one. That ain't the one. So you need to ask that question, who I'm dating, are they bringing glory to God? Now let's get into a very practical part, and um, while you're dating, this is very important. If you're married, this is for you too, okay? Uh, fellas, I didn't know a lot of this stuff, so I'm about to bless all of us, okay? Uh, so here we go. Um, ladies, I'm going to tell you what men want. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, I got my list, all right? You, you, already, you already know. You already know. And fellas, let me tell you this. One plus two plus three equals three. Hang on to that. I'll get to it in a second. Okay, one plus two plus three equals three. I'll I'll get to it in a second. Uh, But let's go back to the ladies. Uh, Your your man, or if you're dating or wanting to date the guy that you're looking for, here's what's important to him. Number one, not in any particular order, (laughs) is respect. Respect. R-E-S-P-C-T, all right? So just blast it on the way, right? Uh, But respect. Um, That's number one, okay? Again, not in any particular order, but, but here we go. Moving on. Uh, Number two would be support or affirmation. Um, And it might sound something like this, like, honey, I know that, you know, insert whatever, is very important to you. How can I help? I know that this is important to you. What can I do to assist you, okay? Uh, Another one might be, um, I think you can do that, honey. We need a coffee table. I think you can make a coffee table. He ain't got no tools, no wood. But when you say that, all of a sudden he's like, you know, I, I think I can. I'm your man. I'm going to make it for you, not the one down the street, not a co- I'm going to make this for you. I'm going to Google, I'm going to YouTube, I'm going to get some splinters, but I'm going to do this thing, and you just put that coffee on there and just watch it lean, right? Oh, don't, don't set the ball on there, right? Just, you know, my, my baby made that one. My baby made, yeah, that's good. It'll give you scoliosis if you kick your legs up on it, but my baby made that. Don't even worry about it. 
but you will be able to prophesy into your home and have him do all sorts of things, right? Marissa did this to me. Man, the side of this house could use a pressure wash. I think you could do that. Me and Heights don't get along. But on the way up that line, I bet I can do that. My baby wants a clean house. I'm going to get me a clean house, right? I'm going to do the thing. I'm going to do it because my, my wife told me to do that. So, so number three, fellas, number three, so we don't waste too much time. Got to hurry up and get this. Up. But, uh, ladies, sorry, number three, uh, you already know. Okay, uh, number three it would be the sex, okay? But here's something that I tell our teenagers. Some people would like, and husbands, if you're in the room, husbands, husbands, married, ring on it, husbands. You would say, Josh, that's funny, that's a cute list, but sex, first off, is not number three, and it's not a want. (laughs) Now, you may know the Bible a little bit more than I do, Josh, but it would definitely be a need. (laughs) So let me tell you what I tell our teenagers. Water is a need. Food, you need food. You need clothes in many climates. In all buildings, you need clothes. <laughs> but you can go a long time without sex, okay? Um, and this isn't a sex, this is more dating, but I want to make sure I talk about it because some people will think how it, it's gone from how long should we date until we have sex to how long should we have sex before we start dating. So I think we should give some attention to it, okay? So uh, here's the thing. I tell our teenagers that there is no social worker who's going to come to your house and take you from your parents if you do not get sex. If you're not getting food, clothes, water, yeah, you're you gone. So it's not a need. But let me, let me go to the, the married couple in the room. Not tell this to your students. Hopefully you'll let them come back on Wednesdays now. <laughs> Is he like this every Wednesday? Every Wednesday. But here's the thing. Pretend if you're not married, pretend that you are married. You fast forward, all right? Um, your spouse goes on a, a, a work trip, and they're gone for like a, a week, Okay. And they get back, and they say, hey, honey, how was it? Oh, it was good. You know, we ran out of groceries. Need. So I ran to the grocery store, got some water and some food, and I made you your favorite because I knew you'd be home. Oh, that's awesome. Uh, But another need arose. But a friend at the gym helped me with that one, so we're all good. How is that going to go? So maybe, fellas, it's more of a, a want, okay? But again, one plus two plus three equals three. So now let's get to your list. All right, here we go. So ladies, you already know these things, um, but I'm sorry, fellas, write this down. You don't know these things, but here we go. Number one, your lady, or if you're dating your future lady, they want security. They want security. And you're like, oh, you already know that. I do push-ups every day. I got that gym membership you were just talking about, you know. And I got 23 guns, protection, security, clank, clank, got it locked down. I'm good there, Josh. Next one, slow down. Slow down, Rambo. Okay, let's, let's, we're not there yet. When I say security, here's what your wife is looking for. Financial peace. That clank, clank you talk, you got, do you have dollar bills in the bank bank, right? That, the, a peace of mind to know that we can pay for some things, and if something breaks, we can afford some things. That's a peace of mind. So when you go and buy your 24th pistol, you have taken security away. Because what you going to do when someone breaks in? You're going to sit there and say, hold on, Mr. Robert. I just need to decide, do I want the Ruger or the Smithfield to handle this thing? The Smith and West, which one do I want? The spring? Oh, man, I, there are too many options. Too many options of slinging some brass. Like, that's not what they want. They want the peace of mind to know that if the water heater goes out, we can afford it. Right? Without you having to pawn away a gun or something. So financial trust and financial peace. And also relational trust that you can go to the gym without trying to fulfill some sort of desire. That it's okay, okay? Um, So that's security, all right? Uh, Next one, number two. Number two, fellas, write this one down. Uh, Your lady wants affection. Oh, I know that one. No, you you don't. (laughs) Affection means compliments. You look good. You work in that dress, right? You work in that thing. Let her best friend tell her, that dress is not for you. (laughs) Let you be the one to say, you work in that thing, girl. Turn around. Look, okay. Okay, a compliment goes a long ways. If you just hold her hand, hey, how you doing? Now, if you ain't used to it, it might take a couple of times. Like, she might jump. Like, I don't know what's going on. It's new. It's new. Hey, let's let the love flow, right? Just hold that hand for a little bit. That's affection, okay? Again, one plus two plus three equals three, right? All right, here's number three. Uh, your wife or future wife wants communication. 
That doesn't mean that you talk. And that's what I struggle with, okay? <laughs> she wants you to listen. Listen, Linda. Listen. Right, just listen. <laughs> but here's the thing. Don't just solve the problem. But I know the answer, Josh. I know you know the answer. I know the answer, too. But when she says, Susan, at work, oh, my goodness, she just stay on my nerves. She just stay on my nerves. Don't jump in and say, well, get a different job. <laughs> problem solved. Hey, let's see. That ain't it. That, that's not the move. Say, oh, my goodness, I know what you're going through. You have a Susan, I have a Jared. At my job, I know exactly how you're going. Tell me more, honey. Tell me more, right? Let them talk about it. They just want someone to listen to. I've gotten to where I'll have to ask Marissa sometimes, okay, do you, do you want the problem solver or the listener? Let me know when I go in. Let me know how I should address this situation. So just be the listener. That's what she wants. And when you can give her security and affection and communication, that's one, that's two, that's three, then you get perhaps number three in your marriage, Okay. There you go. There's your math. One plus two plus three equals perhaps three. All right? Got to work on it. But here's the thing. I want want to make this very practical. The reason you would do these things is because they are someone worth submitting to. The reason they would do those things for you is because they view you as someone worth submitting to. So in our Carter home, we have not talked about these things. These are just like things that get done without a conversation. Uh, But let me bring you into the Carter home. Now, this is not all that we talk about or how things flow. These are the good highlight moments. It's like our Instagram stories. We're not going to show you all the real stuff. (laughs) But here's some of them. Here we go. Uh, Marissa's birthday is tomorrow. Shout out to her. Yeah. (laughs) Happy birthday. We won't sing all that. We run out of time, but it's all good. Yeah, her birthday is tomorrow. 32 never looks so good. Mm -hmm. Hey, I'm going to hold your hand later. But she wanted, so last year, coronavirus, I don't know if y'all knew, but that was a thing, all right? That's still a thing. It's going on, all right? It's this, this thing. And it shut down her birthday like many other people's birthdays, right? So she's like, oh, man. So last year, coronavirus couldn't really do much for her birthday. This year, this weekend, she wanted to go shopping in Raleigh, okay? Financial peace security, guys. If I had bought more pistols, no money to shop with, you know what I'm saying? So, but she wanted to just go shopping and then no gas, she was like, it's just every time. It's like, it just finds a weekend. I was like, maybe you've been sinning. But, but like, if that, <laughs> do we need to pray? That's problem solver, Josh, right? If, if I wanted to be problem solver, Josh, I would have also said, well, honey, you know what? I would, if, if I were you, if I were you, I would wake up early tomorrow and go to a gas pump and see if you can find some gas. Be on the hunt. Be on the lookout. Be on the, maybe there's an app. You go do that, honey. I'll be in bed. Or I could submit to her and say, you want it? Your man's getting it. <laughs> where the gas at? Where the gas at? The sun's not even up and I'm, where the gas at? Pulled into one clothes, right? You see the zeros, you're like, oh, free gas. Let me try them. <laughs> but your boy found the gas. Your boy found the gas because he was on a mission, Right? I got the gas. I came home. When she woke up, I said, we going to Raleigh. (laughs) We going to Raleigh. Oh, you found some gas. That's right. That's right. How much have you spent on my birthday? Don't even worry about it. Don't check until after today is over so you can just go and buy whatever you want to buy. And if we need to move money over or mean to go clean some other people's houses, (laughs) hey, we'll do that too. We'll do that too. But I'll submit to you there. Uh, Another one would be that she likes her car in the garage. Right? Yeah, she wants it. Exactly, right? She wants her car in the garage, tucked away. The thing about that is that my gym is in the garage. So sometimes I got to move her car to make way for my fitness. Right? So, and, and I got to bring it back in. So some, and, and she doesn't always line it up where it's just off the mat where I can still operate. And sometimes I have to back it up even more just because it's not where it should be. I don't say, honey, I've told you, I'm going to draw a line on the wall. Stop the car right here. It's chalk right here. Stop the car right here. So I can work out. I don't do that. I submit to her. I'm going to move the car, right? I'm going to move the car because she's worth submitting to. If she wants me to pressure wash the house again, I'll pressure wash the house again. I'll flood the entryway again. (laughs) But my baby did that. My baby did that. Yeah, she's in there mopping and everything. But my baby did, yeah. (laughs) And our shower has this really cool feature. Husbands, you might know this. That when, if, if you shut the door too hard, all the products in Ulta just fall to the floor in our shower. 
It's a really neat feature. And I don't say, that's it, honey. You get three bottles. Three bottles, that's it. This has precedence. We tell Linux only three toys in the car. You get three bottles in the shower, so I don't have to just turn around like this. I submit to her and say, as many bottles as you want, babe. Whatever you need to do. What, as many, I'll just shut it quietly, right, slowly. And Friday's a cleaning day for me because I know that when she comes home, one of her peaceful things that helps like, her relax is when there's nothing to be done. Like the clothes are put away. That sometimes happens. Uh, the dishes are put away. They at least get washed in the dishwasher. I don't know about put away. But there's some things that I'll try to do when I can. I'm going to submit to her, but here's why. Because she's worth submitting to. I found that out in our process of dating, that she was worth submitting to because there's times that she submits to me, and again, no language is shared. There's times when um, I'm preparing a message like this one, and she'll take up extra time with Linux and say, right, hey, Daddy's studying. Let's go do this thing. Let's go drive the, 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 here. Let's go see Mimi and Papa, right? Oh, that, that's a popular one. Right, let's go here. Let, let, let's do this so that Dad can have his time because she respects, there's number one, right? She respects what I'm trying to prepare for. On Thursday nights after she's had a day of work and she's had rehearsal here at the church and she comes home and right when she comes home, I'm already in a meeting evaluating last night's squad service. Hey, what can we do better? Hey, how many students have taken the next step in their faith? How many people have just made a decision for Christ and they're growing their faith, inviting other people? Safety wise, are we really safe? Let's evaluate. Let's make squad better. And we're in these meetings on Thursday nights. And when Marissa gets in from work and practice, she finds the next, hey, let's finish getting ready for bed because she respects and supports what I'm preparing. No words been shared. No comments been made. She just does it because she's worth submitting to and thinks that I'm worth submitting to. And then I'll work out in the morning, and I'll try to put the weight down quietly. <laughs> but 225 don't come up easy. For some people, okay? That's, that's all I want to say. And she might give me a look in the morning and says, you, you, were, you were loud today. Your son woke up, and, but she'll take care of him in that meantime before 8 o'clock. That's my cutoff when the, he's up, and i gotta, I got to take it from there. But she's going to listen out for him, and she's going to do all that stuff with him. She doesn't come out there and say, that's it. If you make one more noise, I'm selling your equipment. She submits me in that area and says, hey, if you, maybe if you could be quieter, but hey. And here's the best part. I, I know when I get a good workout in, because I may walk by and she gives me that look like. <laughs> Was it leg day? <laughs> One plus two plus three equals three. Right? <laughs> I, I, uh, why, yes, it what? Let me hold your hand. So she submits without having to say anything, but she thinks that I'm, wor- I'm someone worth submitting to. And I think that she's someone worth submitting to. So to close this thing out and the praise team, y'all can come back up. Every good story has good characters, but also has a good plot. So the next question to ask yourself is how? How are we dating? Is how we're dating glorifying God? So some examples to just go ahead and nail down is sex outside of marriage does not honor God. You can't be in a sexual relationship outside of marriage and say, God, bless me with that person. That's not how God ordained it. If you want to know how God ordained it, you can go to Genesis and you say, well, New Testament, New Testament. Cool. Jesus talked about it too. Matthew 19. They actually asked him about something else. They asked him about divorce. He said, well, in answering your question about that, Let me go ahead and get to this part. Here's how marriage was intended. One man, one woman for life. That's when you get to have sex, right? And that kind of covenant. So that's what it's designed for. That's the end game. That's in the dating process of what we're trying to get to. You can't go to the end of the race and then come back. It don't work that way. So how? Would someone, here's another one. Would someone be confused between hearing your love for Jesus and then reading your text messages? Is there a difference there is there is there a gap that they would have to fill and the point being that it's your story so how are you writing your story because your past was sticking to your present and start affecting your future so some rules for dating and then we'll close out fellas ask her on a planned event ask her on a date a time a place ask her to an event and pay attention to how he or she treats people 
how he or she treats her parents and talks about them. But most importantly, before you say, I do, you have to say, I did. You have to sit down with that person. So that's what I want want to do real quick with the time we have left. Is on that date, and I don't suggest the first date, okay? Don't, Don't do that. You'll just scare them away. God may be trying to bless you, and you just, you know, too soon, too often. But before you say, I do, and have that party, you have to sit down and say, here's what I've done. I, w- I want to make sure that I, I tell you everything. And me and Marissa did this. It was stargazing. It, it sounds romantic to you. If we, if we mention stargazing, something bad has happened. And, we've, and we're, that's our moment to share. So we're, we're talking to it and say, hey, here's what I've done. Here's my past. I want to let you know because I don't want you to find out after I do. And then you find out what I've done. Because then my past is going to come into my present and affect my future. So what story do you want to tell? And some of you may be in the room and say, well, Josh, actually, I've already made some mistakes. I've already done some things. I've already dated the wrong way. Well, the good news is your story's not over. You can still tell a great story, but it involves bringing Jesus into your story. So what chapter are you going to write him into? When is he going to be the guiding principle of your dating and your marriage and your relationships and just yourself? Write Jesus in. So here's here's a really cool thing that you get to you get to sit down and you say, hey, here's what I've done. You say all this bad laundry that you've gone through and all these bad events. You say all this stuff and say that that's that's what I've done, but that's not who I am. Because, yeah, I made that decision, I made that mistake, and I didn't save myself for marriage with you, and I already had sex before. But, but, but Jesus, on May 16th, Jesus came the principal in my life, and I started dating with the end in mind. I started dating to honor Jesus, and I started dating to honor my future spouse. And I just wanted you to know because I think you're someone worth submitting to. And I found out as we went through these different events that you're someone worth submitting to. I think I'm someone worth submitting to. Let's stop the dating where it's like, I think you're cute. I think I'm cute. We should be cute together. Let's stop all that. Let's date with the end in mind. So if you would, 1 Corinthians chapter 10, and then we're going to close. Paul wrote this down, and I think it talks a little bit. It's not a dating, again, principle, but it can be applied. He said in verse 31, so whether you eat or drink or whatever you do, somebody say whatever, whatever you do, do it all for the glory of God. How you date, do it for the glory of God. How you talk to people, do it for the glory of God. How you talk about people, do it for the glory of God. In verse 32, he goes on, do not cause anyone to stumble whether Jews, Greeks, or the church of God. He says people who don't believe in Jesus, people who don't even believe in God, and people who are in the church. I think that covers everybody. He says whether it's them, even as I try to please everyone in every way, I'm going to make sure I do it in a way that doesn't cause them to stumble. When you date, don't cause them to stumble. If you're a teenager and mom and dad leave the house, you leave the house too. Don't be left alone in a house with opportunity and cause each other to stumble. But he says in verse 33, even as I try to please everyone in every way, for I am not seeking my own good, but the good of many, so that they may be saved. Paul had the end in mind. So when you're dating, when you're married, let's do it with a purpose, to glorify God. Let me pray for us. Heavenly Father, thank you so much. Thank you for the end in mind. Thank you for showing up in our story. God, I pray that after today, that whenever we introduce people to our family and say, hey, this is my mommy, hey, this is my daddy, that we introduce them to our family, but before they leave, we also sit down and say, and Jesus is my Savior. And when we date, we will have Jesus in our relationship. And if you can't hang with that, let it be known right now, so that way I know that you don't need another interview. You don't need another event with me because I'm in a process with the end in mind and Jesus is in my process because he is the Lord of my life. So I want to invite you to begin or renew your relationship with Jesus before you try to start or continue a relationship with anyone else. So right now where you are, just ask him into your heart. And Crossbone, let's pray this out together if you would on behalf of everyone doing it for the very first time. Heavenly Father, I'm a sinner in need of a Savior. 
I know you're that Savior. Come into my life. Help me live it for you. Because I believe you lived, you died, and you were resurrected. And it was for my sin. And I love you. In Jesus' name, amen.